In this video, we will program a iron condor strategy in Python using the weekly conditional probabilities we previously coded in the options trading strategy in Python. We will review what a iron condor is and how to write a Python script that will tell us the exact options we should buy and sell. First, let's learn what a iron condor strategy is. The iron condor is an advanced options trading strategy designed to generate profits from low volatility in the underlying asset. It involves combining a bull put spread and a bear put spread with the same expiration dates. Let's review the iron condor structure. We have to sell a lower strike put, also known as a short put, then buy an even lower strike put. This is a long put. Then sell a higher strike call, also known as a short call. And finally, buy an even higher strike call, also known as a long call. Iron Condor strategy is a net credit strategy, meaning you receive a premium when opening the position. The maximum profit and loss are capped thanks to the long call and put that we purchased. The Iron Condor is a neutral strategy. It's designed to profit when the underlying asset price stays within a specific range, which is between the short strike prices. Let's review this through an example. Let's say you believe SPY will stay between negative 1% to 1% this week. You can construct an iron condor with SPY calls and puts to profit from your prediction. In other words, in a sideways market, you can potentially benefit. Iron Condor is a neutral strategy designed to profit from low volatility or low stock movement. We can generate revenue by selling a call and a put. These are called short calls and puts. SPY is currently at 595.01. So a 1% move will make SPY 696 cents. So let's sell a call above $600.96 because we believe SPY will not increase greater than 1%. SPY declining by 1% will make SPY worth $589.06. So let's sell a put lower than 589.06 because we believe SPY will not decrease more than 1% in this scenario. We collect premium from both the call and put we sold. However, selling naked calls and puts are dangerous because this introduces unlimited risk. Theoretically, a stock can climb infinitely. So currently, our short call is at risk. A stock could also go to zero. So our short put is also at risk. Therefore, we should buy a call and a put to limit our potential losses. If the stock rallies during the week, then the call we sold becomes in the money and we now risk assignment. When we sell a call and it becomes in the money and we are assigned, then we are required to sell the underlying stock at the agreed upon strike price, even though in the market, the stock is worth more. If the stock drops and becomes in the money and we face assignment on our put, then we are required to purchase the stock at the agreed upon strike price even when the stock is in, in the market is worth less. Buying a call and a put protects us if the price moves significantly outside that range. We can buy the call above the one we sold and we can buy the put below the one we sold. Now that we set up our iron condor, let's run some scenarios. 
let's say we sold a call for a dollar forty seven and sold a put for another dollar forty seven. This means we collected two hundred and ninety four in premium. We take one dollar and forty seven times it by a hundred and then times it by two. For risk protection, let's buy the call above the one we sold and also buy a put below the one we sold. The call costs a dollar nineteen while the put costs a dollar thirty two. This means protection for us costs two hundred and fifty one dollars in total. Let's say we are correct and SPY only goes up 0.5%, which is between the put and call we sold. The options we bought become worthless because the stock is out of the money and the options expired. We keep the premium we collected from the put and call we sold. For our net credit from this successful trade is $43 because our premium of 294 minus our insurance cost of 251 equals $43. This is our profit. While SPY only went up 0.5%, we were able to achieve 17% return in a sideways market. Now let's look at an example where the trade is unsuccessful. Let's say the stock goes past both calls and SPY is now worth 602 per share. Both puts become worthless while the call we bought appreciates in value, while the call we sold becomes more valuable for what we sold it for. Let's say the call we sold for $147 is now worth $419. This means a loss of $272. The call we bought for at $119 is now worth $361. Both puts go worthless. Our put cost is $132, but we collected $147 in premium. Therefore, we calculate $242 minus $272 plus $15 and get negative $15 as our loss in this hypothetical example. Now that we reviewed the iron condor strategy, let's get to coding. I have the weekly conditional probabilities for SPY in my PROBDF data frame. Check out the options trading strategy in Python conditional probabilities video in the top right to calculate weekly probabilities. First, let's calculate to ensure the stock's volatility is relatively low. We can transform the close into a log using the NumPy library and then calculating the rolling volatility using the rolling function. We will use a volatility of 20 for the window. In the market, volatility is the standard deviation. So we can call the standard deviation function against the rolling log returns. We will clean the data frame by dropping nulls. And finally, we can annualize the volatility by squaring the number of trading days and then multiplying this against the daily volatility. We calculate a value of 18%. This means that on average, the price of SPY has moved up or down by 18.66% from its average value in a year. A low rolling volatility can make the iron condor strategy more attractive because this strategy is a neutral strategy designed to profit from low volatility. Let's say 18% is low and that we're comfortable with this volatility so we can continue with the code. The probability data frame calculates the probability of SPY moving a certain percentage amount given that the stock moved a certain amount in the previous week. We can create a get label custom function so that a numerical percentage value knows which row to look at in the data frame. For example, if SPY went up 2.5% last week, then we want to look at the 2% to 3% row in the data frame. We can achieve this by creating a custom get label function that converts a given numerical value into the appropriate label found in the data frame. 
This custom function will help us calculate the iron condor's probability of success. Now let's calculate the iron condor's probability for success. We can grab the start value from our weekly data frame from our previous coding video. Assuming we run this code on Monday or the beginning of the trading week, we will successfully grab the starting stock value. Next, we want the percent change of the previous week for our conditional probability. Now we want to calculate the probability that SPY will stay between negative 1% to 1%. We can achieve this by creating a sum probabilities function where the goal is to add up the appropriate probabilities in the table. We will take four arguments, a data frame, row index, start column, and end column. The data frame is our conditional probabilities data frame, while the row index is the stock percent change from last week. And then the start column is negative 1 to 0%, and the end column is 0% to 1%. The sum prob variable selects the values from the specified range of columns for the row using row.iloc start index and end index plus 1, and sums this up using the dot sum function. In other words, we are adding up the conditional probabilities that SPY moves between negative 1% to 0% and 0% to 1%. We get a value of 0.33 or 33%. When we scroll up, given that SPY went down 2.5%, we add up 0.176 and 0.159 and we get 0.33 or 33%. Let's say we are comfortable with 33% probability. We can calculate what options we should buy and sell. When we sell a call, we want the call to be above 1% because we believe SPY will trade between negative 1% to 1% this week. We do not want to get assigned. Therefore, we can calculate what SPY will be if it increases by 1% and then round up to see the next strike price. We can perform something similar for puts. We want to round down to find the strike price to sell. We can buy the next call and put as insurance. We can store these strike prices in a data dictionary and call the data dictionary Iron Condor. But what if I want to know exactly which options to buy and sell based on these strike prices? We can use the Yahoo Fin library to get calls and puts. We can import options and use the get calls and get puts function. We have to specify the ticker and the date. So our ticker is SPY, while the next Friday is January 3rd, 2025. So that is our date value. Now let's filter this option chain to only show us our iron condor options. We can filter the data frame using the strike price. If the data dictionary key has the word call in it, then filter the DF call on those strike prices. Similarly, if the data dictionary key has the word put in it, then filter the DF put on those strike prices. Now we have filtered the call and put option chains to only show the options we want. Now let's calculate the net credit or potential profit from this trade. We get the premium value from the call that we sell by getting the bid price of 601 strike price call option. 
we can use the df.lock to locate the strike value where the cell call strike is equal to 601. We can repeat this for the put we sell, except now we reference the value from cell put strike. We can do something similar for the call and put that we buy, except now we reference the ask price to be conservative. Generally, I attempt to not buy options at the ask price, and I try to not sell options at the bid price. I want to be patient and haggle with the market, potentially meet somewhere in the middle. But for this model, we will be conservative and pay the ask price while selling at the bid price. We can consider our premium as our revenue, while the options we buy are costs. This will provide us with a net credit of 0.42 or $42. We can calculate the max loss for this iron condor strategy as well. First, we would need to find the spread width, which is the buy call strike minus the sell call strike. Or we can calculate using the sell put strike and the buy put strike. Both should equal one since we bought the options next in line to the ones we sold. Now we minus the spread with against the net credit, and this gives us a potential max loss of 0.57 or $57. Hope you enjoyed this coding video on ion condors and how we can connect our conditional probability table to calculate risk. Check out my recent video on options trading strategies in Python to learn how we code conditional probabilities in Python. I have other coding videos and stock coverages as well on my Entrendia's YouTube channel, so please like and subscribe to not miss another episode. Thank you for watching and coding along with me today, and I will see you all in the next one.